Hey guys, and welcome back to Simplicity Electricity. So in today's episode, I'd like to answer the question of can you run an ethernet cable underground? Now a lot of you may think, well, why would you ever want to run one underground? You know, why not just run it through the walls or just along the floors or something like that? Well, you know, it is a lot better to do it that way, and that's the way it's done in probably almost every business and home, but I got to thinking, I thought, why would you take all the trouble to run it to a different part of your house when it could just possibly be easier to, I don't know, dig it underground? Well, uh, today we're going to answer the question of if it works, how well it works, and the pros and cons of doing it. Alright, so let's jump right in. Okay, so normally I try to keep the nitty gritty stuff like out of videos, but um, really there's just no other way you can show it. Now in most people's houses, what they do is they have a phone line that comes in, uh, let's just say that you have DSL, which is the phone line. It would come in from outside and it would go straight to probably a green cable that uh, maybe AT&T or somebody else gave you. So what this green cable is, it basically it helps transmit the phone signal to your modem. Now I could go more in depth and explain more of what it does, exactly how it works, but it's all about keeping it simple and we all know that by now. So this green cable runs into the back of your modem. So like right now, I have this AT&T modem provided by Motorola, it's an Aris. The model doesn't really matter, but I just thought I'd say it anyway. So what you're going to have on the back of your modem is usually you're going to have where the DSL hooks in. Uh, I don't know if you can see it right there. That's where a phone would hook in right there in kind of that gray patchy area. And the rest of these are all ethernet cord hookups. So these ethernet cords of course go to other modems, I mean, excuse me, other routers in my house. Now you may be thinking, oh well, you probably just ran them in the walls. Well, not exactly. If you go all the way around here, around this big mess that we have, they go out this window, and let me show you how that works. Okay, so there's those two cables that we just saw inside. Now, most people, what they would do is they would run them inside the walls, or in some cases, you know, much as DirecTV did, they would just run it straight upside the house, and they take it into the attic and connect it to the dish wherever it needed to go. Well, that's not what I decided to do. I decided that I would run these cables straight into the ground. That's right, they're dug straight into the ground. You can't even see them from back here. So why did I do this? Well, a lot of times, you know, such as with any cable company or phone company or anything like that, they'll run their cables underground and this is where your DSL signal would come from. It connects to the phone lines and that little white wire is the one that we saw inside the house that goes into the green wire. See, it's connected underground and it usually has PVC or something like that around it. But I got to thinking, would it really hurt these cables, you know, even if they didn't have PVC or anything like that? Well, let's find out. So, I dug the cables all the way through here, going around the air conditioning. And uh, let's just go to the back of the house now. So you'll notice the gray cable comes up right here behind this mushroom. It's a lovely mushroom, isn't it? And uh, it goes all the way, we cut it back in, and it goes into the attic above the patio. So what that cable does is it runs from that modem all the way into the attic which eventually leads to a cutoff in my room where I connect it to a router. So it runs from all the way over there all the way back here. It's underground, it's unprotected, it's exposed to sunlight, cold, whatever. Now the other cable, the slightly lighter colored one, the white one, is right beside it but it separates from the gray cable about right here and it runs all the way over here around this bush and then out of nowhere boom you see this blue ethernet cable so how did it go from being light gray to blue well the answer to that is it had a splitter 
at one point. Now an ethernet splitter, I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute in case you don't know. Somewhere under the ground around this fenced in area, there's an ethernet splitter. So what it does is it connects one ethernet cord to another. Usually this is done if an ethernet cord is not long enough to reach, but you can have another one hooked up to it and make it reach. It's kind of like an extension cord. So it is the only thing really that if you have it underground, it needs to be protected. And what I did with that was I just wrapped up a lot of electrical tape around it to keep any water and moisture out. It also protects it somewhat from the cold and any heat that could be underground, I imagine. So at that point, it's connected to this blue ethernet cord. And then the blue ethernet cord feeds into this window and connects to a router I have sitting right here, hung up on the wall. So that's pretty much my home internet setup. I have one for this side of the house, I have one for my room, and I have one for the downstairs area. And so far, you know, the ethernet cords, they'll get a little bit messy and they're really not made to be outside like this. And I mean, I probably ran this one a good 50 or so feet just getting it right here. And you would think that it would degrade the signal, but it really doesn't. I mean, putting an ethernet cable underground is probably not the smartest move. It has a lot of cons. One of those cons being that, you know, if it messes up, you can't fix it. You can't visibly see where it is. You have to dig it up and probably replace it. But all the benefits are that you don't have to tear out walls. You don't have to climb up in your attic and do things such as that just to make sure that it's not broken. Another benefit with running them underground is that, you know, personally to me, some people may not be able to do exactly that. Some people may not have really a ground. They may be in an apartment or something like that. And I can understand running an ethernet cable underground is not necessarily the smartest move. I've personally never had an internet drop in any part of my house. The connection upstairs and in the garage is as strong as the connection I have down here. You know, even with the cable running underground, it doesn't matter how hot or how cold it gets outside or even if it rains, you know, it stays just fine unprotected. I can imagine that if you didn't cover it up good, of course, if some water got into it, it may mess it up and you may have to retrace your steps, but both of those cables have been out there for about a year now and I've never had a problem with them. So to answer the question, can you run an ethernet cable underground safely? The answer is yes. It's not necessarily the most practical thing to do. It's not exactly time consuming either though it saves you from running stuff through the walls of your house or through the attic or anything like that so i only do it if you really just would rather run it underground or try something new that's strong enough to do it all right thank you very much